soil is solid components. So there are two types of solid components. What are the solid components? First one is soil minerals and another one is soil organic matter. Okay. What are soil minerals? Soil minerals are these particles, sand, silt and clay particles we call as soil minerals. So previously we have discussed about these three particles, sand, silt and clay. Then you should know what are the function of these particles. What are the functions? First one is provide minerals for plant nutrition. You know plant need nutrients for their growth. So the minerals, these sand, silt, clay provide minerals for the growth of plants. For example, nickel, cadmium, cobalt, copper, zinc. These are the minerals which are provided by these sand, silt and clay particles. Uh, second function is retain water and minerals in clay particles. You know, in the soil, there are plants and animals. So, these plants and animals need water for their growth. So, in clay particles, retain water and also retain minerals in clay particles. So, these are the main two functions of soil minerals. Another solid material, soil organic materials, otherwise we can call these organic materials as humus. So what is the meaning of organic materials? That means decayed animal and plant parts. Decayed animal and plant parts we call as soil organic materials. Then we should know what are the functions of these organic materials. First one is storage of nutrients. Yes, you know plants need so many nutrients for their growth. So uh, if the soil is rich in organic materials, that means that soil is rich in so many nutrients. Because the organic materials store the nutrients okay second and third ones increase the capacity of retaining air and soil and also increase the water retention capacity that means if the soil is rich in organic materials that soil increase the capacity of retaining air soil and also water then last one prevents the cracks in soil during dry season. I think you have seen in some soils during dry season we can see there are some cracks. We can see some cracks during dry season in some soils. If the soil is rich in organic materials, it prevents these Another soil component is soil air. So soil air means the air remains in soil particles. In soil particles there is air. So this air we call in soil particles as soil air. So uh, when we put a soil cloth into a glass vessel, we can see Air bubbles are releasing from the soil cloth. When we put the soil cloth into a glass, we can see air bubbles are releasing from this soil cloth. That means the air contained in the soil cloth is released as air bubbles. When the soil lump is dropped into water, the water displaces the air which come out as bubbles. The lump loses its shape due to replacement of air by water.
This trapped air in the soil helps organisms living there to breathe and stay alive. Do you see bubbles coming out from lump of the soil? These bubbles indicate the presence of air in the soil. So, to find out more information about soil air, we can do another activity. Activity 15.5 here we have to take same size glass vessels, same size two glass vessels and for one glass vessel we have to put some soil, some soil up to four centimeters and for another glass vessel we have to put water up to four centimeters. Then what have to do? Then you have to add this water into the glass vessel which we put soil sample. Then what can you see? Here soil sample is 4 cm in height and water sample also 4 cm in height. When we add both together, what can be the height? The height should be 4 and 4. 4 plus 4, 8 centimeters. It should be 8 centimeters. But when we add both together, when we add water into the soil sample, we can see it is less than 8 centimeters. It can be 7 centimeters. So here we can realize that the air contained in this soil sample is 1 cm. That means here 4 cm of soil contains 1 cm of air. That means uh, in this soil sample quarter of the volume of soil contains air. Quarter. Quarter of volume of soil contain air. So here when we add water to this soil sample the air particles in the spaces release and water particles go to that places. That's why we can get 7 centimeters here. It is less than 8 centimeters. Okay? Understood? Then that is about Soil air. So you should know what are the functions of soil air. What are the functions? You know in the soil there are plant roots. And also there are soil organisms. So these plant roots and soil organisms need gases. That means oxygen or carbon dioxide for their respiration. So the soil air provides gases for their respiration. Then needs in germination of seed. So seed germination need gases for their germinating. So soil layer provides the gases, mainly oxygen, for the germination of seeds. Then creates porosity in soil. Do you know a good soil contains a porosity? Good soil there should be some porosity. So the spaces in the soil create the porosity. That means in the spaces there are air particles. So the soil layer creates porosity in soil. Another component of soil is soil water. So soil water. When we take a soil sample in your ground, we can feel it is dry. Dry soil sample. But there is water. There is water in the soil sample. So how can we identify whether there is water in the soil sample? We can do this practical. We can take a soil sample in your compound or in other place and put that soil sample into a test tube. This is the test tube and 
using a Bunsen burner, we can heat the soil sample. Um, while heating, we can observe that a liquid droplets deposit on the wall of test tube. A liquid droplets, we can see liquid droplets deposit on the wall of the test tube. Take some soil in a test tube. Light the spirit lamp. Now with the help of a test tube holder, heat the soil sample. Notice the vapors coming out and the condensed water droplets on the sides of the test tube. Thus we can say that soil indeed contains water. So how can we identify whether it is water? There is a chemical called copper sulfate in your laboratory. In our laboratory, there is a chemical called copper sulfate. Normally, it is in blue color, blue color copper sulfate. So, when we heat this blue color copper sulfate, it turns into white color, white color copper sulfate. So, we call this white color copper sulfate as anhydrous copper sulfate because here, there is water molecules in blue color copper sulfate. When we heat the water molecules removed from the copper sulfate, then we call the white color copper sulfate as anhydrous copper sulfate. So, when we add water into this anhydrous copper sulfate, that means it is white color. White color copper sulfate we call it anhydrous copper sulfate. When we add water again to this anhydrous copper sulfate, it becomes blue color again. So here in our practical, we can use, we can add this anhydrous copper sulfate onto the droplets that deposited on the wall of our test tube. So we can observe that the anhydrous copper sulfate becomes into blue color. That means that liquid droplets are water. So it is clear that soil contains water. So water is in the soil. So what are the functions of this soil water? You should know the functions of soil water. You all know there are microorganisms and organisms, plants and animals in the soil. So these all organisms need water to maintain their body, maintain their life, maintain their functions. Water is must. And there are nutrients in soil. So these nutrients dissolve in the water, water of soil. Plants can absorb these nutrients via water. And this soil water controls the temperature of the soil. And you know, the plants do photosynthesis. So, water is one raw material for the photosynthesis. So, these are the functions of water. The last component of the soil. What is it? Soil organisms. How can you find soil organisms? Okay. We can take some soil samples in different places. In under a tree, in your compound, soil sample in a flower bed and a soil sample under a large tree. We can take these soil samples separately and spread on a white sheet. Spread on a white sheet. So, we can find out some organisms like ants, millipedes and centipedes and other animals we can find out. Okay, these animals we can see, we can observe with our naked eye. But there will be some organisms we cannot observe, we cannot see with our naked eye. That means they are microorganisms. So we call it those microorganisms. 
microorganisms as soil microorganisms. Okay, to find out whether there are soil microorganisms, we can do another practical. Activity 15.8. Here we have to take two same size test tube and we have to sterilize these two test tubes. Why? What's the reason for sterilized one? What's the reason for getting sterilized test tubes? Because sometimes there will be microorganisms in these test tubes. So we have to destroy these microorganisms by sterilizing. Okay. Then we have to add, we have to put same amount of boiled milk into these two test tubes and allow to cool. Then we have to take the soil sample. We have to take the soil sample and divide these soil samples into two equal amounts, two equal parts. Okay. Then take one soil sample and heat it. Heat it for about five minutes. Yes. We can heat one soil sample for about 5 minutes. Okay. Then uh, put heated soil sample into one test tube and put another soil sample that means non-heated soil sample into next test tube. Then close these two test tubes by using cotton stoppers. So the microorganisms cannot go through these cotton stoppers. Okay, then observe. While observing, we can observe that the boiled milk, the boiled milk in this test tube, that means the test tube that we added non-heated soil sample, the boiled milk coagulate faster. This milk coagulate faster. But here, the milk coagulate very slowly. So, what is the reason for this coagulating of milk? We know for the coagulation of milk, microorganisms are needed. So, here there is a cotton stopper. So, microorganisms cannot come through this cotton stopper. So, this soil sample contains microorganisms. That microorganisms go to the this milk and coagulate the milk. So it is clear that there are microorganisms in the soil. Okay. So here there is a diagram. Diagram in page number 66. So there are some different organisms who live in the soil. Housefly. Snails, earthworms, bacteria, beetles, centipedes, mice. There are a lot of organisms. Now you should know what are the functions of these soil organisms. What are the functions? Do you know there are earthworms in our soil? So these earthworms dig holes in soil. So soil gets loose, loosened and it gets air. Another function is there are a microorganism in the soil. So these decayed plant and animal materials in the soil. So soil gets minerals from these plant and animal materials.